Hi there, it's Jeff here. I'm going to take you through a 25 mark question on market failure and government policy intervention. And I've chosen the energy drinks market as my little case study. So here's the stem. The, this is a fast growing market. The UK market for energy and sports drinks was worth about £3 billion 2023 and over a billion litres of sports and energy drinks were consumed in the UK. Uh, the market leaders are Red Bull and Monster. They're the leading brands. They have, um, well, gosh, over £750 million pounds worth of sales. So do the maths. They have well over a quarter of the market. Here's my question. Assess possible interventions designed to deal with market failure in the energy drinks market or an industry of your choice. 25 marks. This is for the LXL board. So you could choose another industry or you could choose the energy drinks market. And I have chosen to do that. Now, with the 25 market, we're looking to build two KA paragraphs, two evaluation paragraphs and a final reason judgment supporting with diagrams. Here's my first KA paragraph. So one policy might be to introduce a minimum retail price uh, based on, for example, caffeine content. So that would be similar to the minimum unit price for alcohol in Scotland, which came in a few years ago. The aim of that would be at reducing overconsumption and thereby addressing negative externalities associated with caffeine intake. So uh, clearly caffeine can be a stimulant and it can be mixed externalities, but I'm going to assume there are some negative consumption externalities. By setting a legal price floor above the free market level, I like this phrase, this policy in theory, it's a nice phrase to use, discourages the sale of cheap high caffeine drinks that tend to be disproportionately consumed by younger and lower income people. Then you flag up to the diagram, which is coming in a second. Keteris paribus, other things being equal, this might cause demand to fall to Q2, which is a social optimum. And it could incentivize manufacturers such as Red Bull to reformulate their products, perhaps with reduced caffeine levels to lower their price point. Now, of course, a lot of people consume these drinks because they want the caffeine. But the worry is that this leads to things like addiction and some antisocial behavior. Here's my diagram. I'm going to use a negative externalities diagram uh, for Edexcel, which shows uh, that social cost lies above private cost. So uh, the consumption leads to negative externalities. So social cost is private cost plus external cost. Free market equilibrium is at Q1, P1, equilibrium point C. And the aim of a minimum price is to go above P1, to so set a legal minimum price, hopefully to bring consumption down from Q1 to Q2 contraction in demand. However, evaluation point one, as with all interventions, there is often the risk. Now, hedging words there, there's often the risk of government failure. For example, the policy may have regressive effects with the burden falling more heavily on consumers and families with lower disposable incomes. And if the minimum price is set too high, it could lead to unintended consequences, such as increased consumption of alternative caffeinated products, coffee shops, all that kind of stuff, or the growth of a black market for cheaper uh, unregulated energy drinks. The effectiveness of a minimum price would then depend on costly enforcement measures and, and, uh, and other interventions, public health campaigns and taxation. So pretty good evaluation there. Second KA point, you need a second policy. I've gone for a tax. So a second intervention might be, that's a nice little way of flagging up to the exam, and this is my second point, uh, impose an indirect tax on these drinks designed again to internalise negative externalities um, and, and put in there some, some examples, health costs related to heart disease, obesity and addiction-like behaviours. By imposing an tax on manufacturers of drinks such as Red Bull and Monster, a nice context there, the government effectively increases the marginal cost of production, shifting the market supply curve to the left, leading to increased prices and lower quantities demanded. So a nice chain of reasoning there. And this aligns with the principle of Pigouvian taxation, make, make the polluter pay in that sense, where tax is levied to correct a market failure caused by externalities not reflected in market prices. And developing the point, the tax creates government revenue, which could therefore be allocated towards NHS initiatives, including uh, public health campaigns. There's my tax diagram. You don't necessarily need a second diagram, but I've, I've drawn, I've got two policies. So I thought I'd use two diagrams, one for each policy, showing the tax per unit. The price goes up from P1 to P2, and you can show the tax revenue there, which is P2A, B, P3. However, in evaluation, the tax's effectiveness depends on the price elasticity of demand. I'll put in a little example there. If demand for energy drinks has a low price elasticity of minus 0.3, 
Consumption may not fall significantly. 30% rise in price will only cause a 10% contraction of demand. And again, the tax burden falls more heavily on consumers rather than suppliers. And if you tax these things very heavily, cross-border purchasing or black market alternatives could arise, reducing effectiveness and hitting forecast tax revenues. So there's a pretty, pretty standard point, isn't it? Put a tax on something, but the, it, the impact depends on the elasticity. And if you tax it very highly, you get some um, uh, shadow market activity. And then we are looking for a final reason judgment. Um, try not to repeat too much in this final section, but keep it in context. On balance, I would favour a mix of interventions. Ah, right, so no one policy on its own is going to address the issue. A cap on caffeine content per serving or tied to age regulations for retailers might help hedging wood to control excessive consumption. This might be alongside awareness campaigns for consumers allowing for better, more rational decision-making. In the long run, this might work better than taxes and minimum prices. So ultimately, uh, the argument is that behavioural interventions might be more effective than the two alternatives I suggested in my KAA points. I put this through our Examiner AI system. I thought, well, what kind of mark would he get? And it came out with 23 out of 25, 15 and 8. Uh, I think that's fair. It's, I think it's definitely an, an A-star answer. The answer provides comprehensive knowledge of market failure, minimum prices and taxation, two clear interventions. The answer effectively applies economic concepts using specific data and examples. The analysis is well developed, uh, supported by diagrams illustrating shifts in supply and demand. And evaluation is strong. It considers multiple perspectives such as potential government failures and the importance of price elasticity of demand. It's a good answer, but it doesn't have to be a perfect answer to get a, a really good grade. Keep in mind, you've got half an hour to write these questions. So if you if you stick to the structure, two KA points, two evaluation points, final comment written in context, then you'll be fine. <laughs>